After a relatively calm first three weeks of the NFL and survivor polls, in week four, the Rams and Colts went down. In week five, it was the Chiefs and the Bears. We'll talk all about it and get you ready for week six and hopefully avoid this week's upsets. All coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Gary Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, week five is in the books. <laughs> All right. And I gotta tell you, there were there were a few surprises in there. It's really getting good, Eric. I mean, yeah. we're, we're starting to see the upsets now, which is kind of nice for a survivor pool perspective. I like it. Absolutely, especially when it's not one of the ones that we said to the pick. So, uh, feeling, feeling, feeling good about that. So, I want to give a shout out to William Mallory, who has the guts that I don't have, who picked the Saints over the Bucks. And I wanted to do that because I lost last year picking the Saints over the Bucks, and the Bucks gave me a strike this year. So shout out to you, William. Yeah, well, Eric, there are a couple other things, though, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, we, uh, we talked... We talked about the Chiefs. It was one of the games we talked about. That yeah. was a genuine surprise. It was Marlon Mack left. Marlon Mack right. Marlon Mack up the gut. I don't know. Andy may have exposed yep. a potential weakness to the team that we all thought, maybe even still think, uh, was the best team in the NFL. Every single uh team that's going to face the Chiefs. Watch that film. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll talk more about the Chiefs because they're one of the games that we're going to talk about. Should you pick them? Should you Should okay. you not? But I want to get to the Chicago Bears upset in, Oakland, in uh, London by the Oakland Raiders. That one hurt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I believe I said the Oakland Raiders are not a really bad team. <laughs> so, but I anyway. may, may have disagreed with that statement. <laughs> but I reserve the right to be wrong. Okay. What can I tell you? That was a shocker. Yeah, to well, me, that, and I think everybody in Chicago, that was a shocker. Yeah, so I'm right once, so <laughs> I'm not <laughs> being on, arrogant on, about on. it. Come All on, right, so on. I just want to comment, Gary. I've, I've said in other videos that the hardest weeks in Survivor Pool is week one, two, three, and four because you don't get a feel for yeah. the NFL. Well, now I feel like yeah. I have a feel for the NFL. And remember, in Survivor Pools, you're picking against a team as much as you're picking for a team. Mm -hmm. Because you can pick against a team over and over and over again uh, because there's no limit. <laughs> yeah. So, Washington. So, except God. They, except they play each other this well, week. I'm glad that you, you took a shot at <laughs> Miami. They had a bye week. They didn't even lose last week. I know. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, as Gary said, if I put my bottom five at the top of my bottom five <laughs> is Miami, and then there's Washington, I believe Cincinnati has earned a, a third spot. And then I'm going to put the New York Giants there until Saquon Barkley returns. You should feel confident picking against the New York Giants. And the fifth pick before this week, I had the other New York team, the New York Jets, but with Sam Darnold coming back, I'm going to slide the Arizona Cardinals in there. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You know, first of all, the Jets have only played one game all season without Luke Falk as their quarterback, right? So I, I feel like we don't quite know yet. You know, about how good this Jets team is going to be or not. I do know one thing, though. They have a good defense. And a good defense is going to win you some games, right? A good defense, good running game, for sure, uh, with Le'Veon Bell. The, uh, and the Giants, like you said, Saquon's coming back, and that is an absolute game changer. He is one of the best players in the NFL. The, I'll tell you what, though. The Miami Dolphins and adding the Washington Redskins to that list, not only... Are they very bad? They're very bad in all facets of the game. Both both have a bottom both have a bottom five offense, and both have a bottom ten in Miami's case, bottom uh, bottom five defense. And you, there's nothing on the horizon that suggests they're going to get any better, Eric. Yeah. So honestly, the, the anti-Miami strategy that we've been preaching all year can absolutely safely be expanded. Anti-Miami and anti-Washington. The good news is they have buys on different weeks. The only bad news is they play each other this week. And let's just talk about it because we already got into it. <laughs> um, I'm not comfortable picking this game. You know, for all those folks out there uh, that have a strike like I do, especially if you're my people, and my people are the people who pick the Rams, um, <laughs> you're going to have to take a stand somewhere between now and week 10 when we can join the other people who don't have a, sh have a, have a strike. And I don't want to do it with this game. Uh, because, I, Gary, 
the Redskins are a really bad team, and I am not going to go and tell everybody, how did you get knocked out in the pool? I picked the Redskins on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so I, I, you're staying away from this game. I'm staying away from this game. I, I am staying away from this game, Eric, just really briefly. I wonder, in NFL history, I don't know the answer. Maybe a viewer does. Please comment if you do. Has it ever been the case in the NFL that a winless team that just fired their head coach has been a six-and-a-half-point favorite on the road? Has that ever yeah. happened before? That's an absurd spread, and it's moved to three-and-a-half. I can't wrap my arms around it, but you're right. The public thought it was an <laughs> absurd Apparently spread. So. Apparently so. Yeah, I'm staying away from the game, too. So, the rest of the remaining slates, Dallas, seven-point favorites at home. Uh, excuse me, on the road against the New York Jets. Baltimore, eight and a half point favorites at home versus Cincinnati. Kansas City, same number, eight and a half point favorites at home versus Houston. Biggest spread of the week, Eric, the New England Patriots, 14 point favorites at home versus your New York Giants. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we, will, we will get that. They are not my New York Giants. Nah. But, by the way, my Seattle Seahawks are 4 1. Your team's 4 0. You're, really, you're loving this year. Undefeated in the pool. Your team is undefeated. And we're going to face the Rams in L.A. this yeah. coming Sunday. Yeah. More talk on yeah. that You're later. That That's going to be the real test. Not going with your Niners this week. <laughs> I, I'm not going with the Niners. But note, I'm not going with the Rams either. Yeah. I think both teams have a shot at that game. Eric, I think we talked about the first game. Yeah. I just want to briefly, there's a couple of games that we didn't cover that are on here that at least should be a consideration. Both five and a half Point favorites the uh, the LA Chargers uh, at home playing against a Pittsburgh team on their third with a third string QB uh, and Green Bay five and a half point favorites at home against Detroit who's coming off a bye. Uh, you know what? Uh, if I did not have a strike, <laughs> this might be a, a situation where I would take a chance in one of these games. I can't do that. I don't have that. Luxury. Um, so, and I really, like I said, I don't like pay, p- playing against, uh, picking teams against opponents coming off a bye. I'm not confident in that Green Bay game. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, you know, San Diego, San Diego, how often have I done that, Eric? The Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no question they should win this game. They're much more talented on paper. They're still really banged up. And, Eric, every time I extol the virtues of the Chargers, they lose. They're 2-3. <laughs> and three. They've lost more than they won. I, 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 I find it, even at home, I find it hard to trust a team like that. Yeah. Uh, just as, as one example, picking one of those two games you talked about. And Pittsburgh, I mean, they showed a lot of heart last, last week. Almost beat the, the Ravens, even with that third-string QB. So... Um, if you want to make your stand now and go for this game, or if you, so you're not going for it even though you don't have a strike. Even though I don't have a strike, okay. this, is not the t- this is not the week that I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. Uh, if I did, I'd probably pick the Chargers. But We're waiting. I, I <laughs> yeah, hey, my strategy's been working. <laughs> okay. If you pick uh, the teams that I said to pick each week, congratulations. Oh, you're 5-0. It's tough living with this guy. <laughs> All right. So, Gary, let's go to the, the next game on our list. Yeah, it's, okay, so Dallas is seven-point favorites on the road (laughs) against the New York Jets. Eric, I said it before, I'll say it again. I don't have a good handle on the Jets, and I don't see how anybody could. They've played one and only one game where Luke Falk isn't their quarterback. This makes a huge difference. I mean, realistically, look, between any team, between your first string quarterback and your third string quarterback, not the second string, third string quarterback, Luke Falk. Right, as the Steelers are about to find out, makes a hell of a huge difference. Everyone and their grandmother has been keying on the only real offensive weapon that's been healthy for the Jets. That's Le'Veon Bell. He's been incredibly inefficient, but he's got massive amounts of volume because the Jets have had no other choice yeah. right, on offense. So we don't have a good sense of what their offense can really do. Chris Herndon's now playing. Robbie Anderson's now playing. And, of course, the most important piece, Sam Darnold is now playing. None of that has been true for the last four weeks. Right. So I, for the, mainly for those reasons, I, I just don't feel safe about picking this game. Maybe a couple other things to throw in there. Um, you know, for one thing, the Jets do have a good defense, right? If you look, they've got the eighth fewest points scored against them. 
And they're probably better than that because the offense has been so bad that the defense has had to been on the field so much, and they still only have the eighth fewest points scored against them. So that is a genuinely strong defense that continues to be healthy. And Dallas, well, yep. Dallas has beaten the Giants, the Redskins, and the Dolphins. Yep. I think we just talked about two of the three of those on your don't pick list. So I'm going to agree with everything you said, and I think you're going to take the same position I do. We already picked Dallas. But even if I had Dallas available, look, this is one of the best games they have left, so I understand why you might want to pick them. But look, if you're talking about a teams that have a chance to make the Super Bowl, the Dallas Cowboys are pretenders. They're not contenders. As Gary said, 3-0, and look at the three, when they were 3-0, and look at the three teams they played. And when they played Miami, they were even basically at halftime. When they played Washington, they were basically even at the end of three quarters. That's ridiculous. The two teams that we just said and are then, literally the worst teams in the NFL. And, and, right. and, and they're, they're, they're not able to blow them out early in the, in the game. Yeah. And in addition to that, they go and lose to the Drew Brees-less uh, Saints and just get, in my opinion, dominated by the Green Bay Packers at home. Top on everything Gary said about the resurgent, uh, potential resurgence of Jets getting healthy, I'm out. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so uh, Baltimore is eight and a half point favorites at home against uh, Cincinnati. Uh, look, I also have picked Baltimore, but uh, under the thought that if I hadn't picked Baltimore, they would be, they're my second pick this week, right? Uh, so I do like this game. I certainly like it more than the other eight and a half point game, but temper expectations. I just kind of slammed the Cowboys. I'm going to slam the Ravens as well. If you're talking about, hey, is this a great team? No, they're not a great team. Look who they have beaten. The Dolphins again. <laughs> the Cardinals. Yep. Two other members of, the, of, of my I, bottom I think five. you threw with them in the bottom five there, didn't you? And the Steelers. If the third string QB barely yeah. beat them. So they're not that great. But neither, are, you know who else is not that great? The team they're playing, the Cincinnati Bengals. They're not good anyway. Their offensive line is a mess, and they've been hit hard in their receiving core. Uh, A.J. Green is still out. John Ross is out. And guess who else is out of this game? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another game I like more. But not bad. Yeah, I, 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 look, I like Baltimore, and I strongly dislike Cincinnati, and Baltimore's strengths <laughs> are Cincinnati's weaknesses. Baltimore can literally run it down Cincinnati's throat, and if they need to pass, Cincinnati just gets devastated by, uh, you know, by passes over the middle, and, uh, you know, Baltimore's got Mark Andrews, the tight end. The, uh, and not only that, Hollywood Brown goes over the middle, too, sometimes. But here's the real reason why I wouldn't pick Baltimore this week, okay, other than some of the reasons that Eric just talked about. Um, Week 15, that's a long way away. And some of you are thinking, I can't plan out that far. I got to survive between week six and week 15. I get it. I totally get it. But for those of you that do plan that far in advance, and especially for those of you that, uh, you know, that already have a, you know, that already have a strike, because there are reasons why this game is, can be a little bit iffy. Think about week 15 for a second. Baltimore has a 13 and a half point projected line in week 15. The only I other, so. the only other, uh, I believe mm-hmm. it's, a, I believe it's the Jets. Okay. Um, the only other two teams that are anywhere close in that neighborhood are New England and Kansas City, and you'll likely have already picked uh, picked those two by then. Other than the 13 and a half point favored uh, projected favorite Baltimore, the next favorite team other than New England Kansas City is six points. It's that stark, folks. So if you can just, if you can look that far ahead to week 15, please save Baltimore. You will be incredibly happy you did. I'll start off with probably the weaker of the remaining two, which is Kansas City, uh, eight and a half point favorites at home versus Houston. Look, uh, I'll be honest with you. Kansas City may very well win this game and probably should. Okay. Um, Houston, if you think about the, the blueprint that we just learned, how to beat Kansas City, right? <laughs> you run it down their throats if you can. They got a decent pass defense, but boy, did their rush defense look lousy, and it's looked lousy all season. So you run it down their throats, and you have a darn good defense that can take their long throws away. You have two top corners that can take away the ceiling off their passing game. That's what Indy did to beat Kansas City this past week. Houston does not have those strengths, right? Houston's defense is no match for Kansas City's offense the way that Indy's was. 
And Houston has a very prolific passing game, but what they don't have is a prolific running game. So their their strengths don't match up with Kansas City. So I think Kansas City is likely to win this game. I, I got to tell you, Indy just provided a blueprint. So I'm not as confident with Kansas City as I have been in the past, that's for sure. But, you know, they got the top two offense. They get above average defense. Their strengths match up with Houston's weaknesses. Houston's strengths do not match up with Kansas City's weaknesses. But, again, future value. We just talked about that uh, with Baltimore. Kansas City will be favored more than eight and a half points, more than their favorite this week, four more times throughout the year. So if you can save Kansas City, they have a lot more future value than they do this week. And there's a better game to pick this week that we'll talk about in a moment. Yeah, and I, this is what I think about the eight and a half point spread this week. I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. Look, I would pick. Houston. You don't like it. I, I would pick Houston with the points and, and, a, and, a, and a heartbeat. I don't think this is so obvious that Kansas City is going to win this game. And like Gary said, you save them for the future value. But how about just save them when they get healthy? There's no. Uh, it's unclear whether they're going to have Tyreek Hill or Sammy Watkins, and that does hurt. As good as Pat Mahomes is, and Pat Mahomes was hobbled last uh, week. Will he be a hundred percent? He'll play, but will he be a hundred percent? Without his two biggest weapons, or at least two of the three biggest weapons, because he also has Travis Kelsey, you know, um, I am out (laughs) completely. I would not. Look, everyone who picks Kansas City in the comments, or I'm going to like troll you. No, just kidding. Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> just kidding. Do, do what you want. Value. Save him for another week. Do really. what you want. we got a better game that we can talk about now. Eric, let, let's talk about this game, the last remaining game. The New England Patriots, 14 points at home against whoever is left on the roster for the New York Giants because, boy, are they banged up. You know, you've talked about leave it, leave it for like the last three weeks in a row. Now we've finally arrived, Eric. Talk about the New England Patriots for a moment. Well, it's time to gobble it, <laughs> gobble it up. Uh, the New England Patriots are 5-0, and oh, and they won by an average of 22 points this year. Uh, so there's no question that uh, they're a great team. They're great offensively, and they're great defensively. They've allowed the least number of points on the defensive side and scored the second most uh, offensively. Now, you really, I I say this especially to the folks that have a strike. You're going to have to use New England either this week or next week. Next week, they're playing at the New York Jets. You can pick them this week when they're home against the Giants. A Giants which they, which as of filming, Saquon Barkley is unlikely to play. And Evan Ingram is unlikely to play. In concussion protocol is uh, Gallman, the running back, the replacement for Saquon Barkley, and Sterling Shepard, the wide receiver. They yeah. lost all their weapons. And what we talked they're, they're about... They're a mash unit. And Eric, it's Thursday. They're playing Thursday. It, so these guys don't have much time to get healthy. Yeah. And... But, Players who are in concussion protocol either likely won't play or when they do play, they usually don't do as well. So in comparing the two New York teams, Gary, because I say that you have to use New England, especially if you have a strike this week or next week, because their future value isn't great until the very end of the season, and you can't wait that long. Um, you got to get to week 10 if you're for the people who have strikes. Speak for yourself. Yeah, well, maybe you can wait that long, but we can't wait that long. And I just think the Giants at home are much better with their injuries than at the New York Jets, who that New York team is getting healthier. No, that's right. I mean, look, here's the bottom line, and and Eric alluded to it. You don't need me to tell you why New England is going to win this game. I think everybody knows that, right? Even if the Giants were healthy, they, they wouldn't have much of a shot, and they're obviously extraordinarily unhealthy. But here's the deal. After next week, which I understand is not this week, but after next week, New England does not have a spread that's anywhere close to 14 points until week 17. Eric's at very far in the schedule. It's literally until week 17. Oh, and by the way, 
Chances are New England won't need to play anybody on Week 17 because they'll already have their playoff position locked up. That's the way things are trending now as the only undefeated team in the AFC. So you definitely don't want to pick till Week 17. Uh, wait till Week 17 to pick New England. Okay, you, but, you got to pick them this week or next week for sure. In fairness, it may not be as high as a spread, but they are going to be big favorites in Week 15 and Week 16 when they play Cincinnati and Buffalo. So they could still use them those weeks. Oh, less future value got- than it has right now. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so we have violent agreement. Pig, pig New England. Why do I have to start an argument when we agree? So we agree again. I just, all right. So we're both going with New England this week. If you look at the experts panel, Las Vegas would like to go with New England, but they already picked New England. So Las Vegas can't pick Kansas City either. So their pick is Baltimore. So we got two Baltimore picks and then two New England picks to round out our slate for the week. That's right. I think we are ready for the mailbag. Mail call. Get around, everyone. Well, let's see what's in the mail. What's this? A letter for me. What do we got? All right. Uh, A lot of really fun uh, messages we got over email we wanted to share. T.J. Goss says, I was watching you on Wednesday night when my fiancé sleeps so I can get my picks in and the fantasy lineups done. It's my wedding week. And it was my wedding week on Saturday. See, he was watching us late at night when he should be getting prepared for his wedding. We appreciate it. Dude, shout out to you, buddy. But I think you can maybe find something better to do with your time at night with your fiance than watch our picks. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know. He goes, me. he goes on saying, continue to do the amazing work you guys do. Thank you so much, TJ. We appreciate it. And in your honor, we're actually going to try to get the Survivor uh, video out early if we don't get into technology problems. Um, Chris uh, Quanstrom says, hmm. lots of laughs at 6 a.m. in a rainy Chicago. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys. Well, we need to hopefully uplift you, not just for the rain, but <laughs> your Bears loss in London last week. But you know what? That's the, not going to uplift the, the, you. <laughs> the, the, the thought, though, that, Gary, that people watch our videos and we brighten their day and make them feel better, get a laugh, yeah. I mean, that makes us feel great, so... Uh, makes it worthwhile, all the hours of prep and, and editing and uh, uh, that we do. Yeah, no, appreciate that. We definitely try and be entertaining. We obviously bring a lot of modeling and a lot of analytical rigor. We hope you agree to the show. But, yeah, if we're not entertaining, nobody's going to watch. So yeah. thank you for your comments. Last one is, I'm going to try to put it on the screen. Eddie Sparks leaves a picture uh, of him on his world tour, of his book tour, uh, overseas and at the table watching these two guys. <laughs> so, gosh, we, we travel well. We love that. If anyone else wants to send us, uh, go to our fantasyfootballconsultants.net, go to the Contact Us page. We'll send us an email if you have pictures of you in various places enjoying the. Our, our shows, we'd love to, we'd love to see it. And I'm happy to give you a shout out on the show. Just send it over. Yes. So, uh, so Gary, th- that'll do it for week six of uh, Survivor Pools. We want to remind you, if you come this far, we don't always say it on our shows because it's a little annoying. But if you want to support the show and help us out, please do two things every time you watch the, the video smash the like button, and share our content of that video with your friends. People that you know who like the NFL, just shoot them an email with a link to uh, this video. It would really help us out. We recently hit the 4,000 subscriber mark. Uh, we want to awesome. continue that momentum. Uh, and um, therefore, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this video, just hit the red subscriber button. Uh, we would appreciate it. It helps us out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to see the results uh, of the survivor pool, there, there are unfortunately some technology issues uh, going on in California for those of you who don't live here. Uh, PG&E is cutting power. So that is delaying our being able to publish our survivor table um, likely until Friday. We apologize for that. Uh, but please go to fantasyfootballconsultants.net on the website. Um, it's obviously normally published uh, by Tuesday night, 
But, uh, you know, this week we're going to have it out published by Friday. Yeah, it lets you know how many people are left in the survivor pool and how many people have a strike. So it's a really good thing to watch, especially if you're still uh, alive in the pool. We'll do our weekly reminder that if you play daily fantasy football, check out our content on that. Uh, when it's ready, we'll put it up on our end screen, both our FanDuel and our DraftKings show and our DFS Masterclass playlist. Until our next video in week seven. We'll see you then. See you next time.